But firstly, childhood blindness. A couple of years ago, we ran a large survey in the small Southeast Asian country of Laos. It was a survey to determine the need for glasses amongst school children. And what we found was quite surprising. Laotian school children actually had the best vision ever reported. And what's more, Australian Aboriginal children also have amongst the best vision in the world. Vision loss is actually five times less common than in mainstream Australian children. So what's all the fuss about? Well, for children who are born blind or who become blind in the first years of life, they have a lifetime of blindness ahead of them. In Asia alone, this accounts for 60 million blind years. That is 60 million years of living in darkness. And it's second only the cataracts as the leading cause of blindness in the world. It is an enormous problem. So naturally, a lot of Sightfall's time and energy is dedicated to this important cause. So now I'd like to share with you our Asian Childhood Blindness Initiative. Sadly, in many developing countries, children who are blind rarely make it to schools who are blind in their country. In fact, less than 1% of blind kids make it to any form of schooling whatsoever. Most of them are hidden away in their villages, perhaps a source of shame to their families, undoubtedly a burden to their mothers. But most of these kids should still be leading a happy and productive life. They just simply have no one to advocate for them. The real problem is an absolute shortage of children's eye surgeons and children's eye facilities in Asia. So last year, sorry, two years ago, we set up the very first children's eye unit in Myanmar. Myanmar has been very topical in the media recently, but until two years ago, didn't have a single paediatric eye facility. And you might remember at the last morning tea, I introduced you to young Burmese ophthalmologist named Tan Twinong. He spent a year with us training at the Children's Hospital and returned just before the last morning tea as the very first children's eye surgeon in his country, a country of 60 million people. So he's been back there for two years now, seeing hundreds of children every month in the clinic that we set up for him and operating on the very best of surgical instruments. In the two years since he's been back, there's been a 10 times increase in the number of children's eye surgeries performed at the major teaching hospital in the capital city, Yangon. A 10 times increase, that's a phenomenal impact and it's absolutely the type of impact that we're trying to achieve with the work that we do. And more importantly, he's passing on his skills and knowledge to his colleagues so that they can treat children appropriately. And that's the all-important sustainability factor that's so vital in the work that we're doing. Last year, we set up the very first fully equipped children's eye centre in Sri Lanka in the second largest city of Kandy. And this is Dr. Tavisha who's been working in that unit. He's actually coming out to Adelaide next month to do some advanced paediatric eye surgery training with us. And when he returns, he'll be the second only children's eye surgeon in his country working in the public sector the second in the country of 20 million people. And later this year, we're training an eye surgeon, a paediatric eye surgeon for Bangladesh and setting up a brand new children's eye unit in a new hospital in the capital city, Dakar. And a big thank you to Santos, who's sponsoring this initiative. And occasionally, the doctors in Asia have difficulty uh, coming to Australia to be registered as doctors because of poor English. So in this situation, we're actually taking the training to them. So in Vietnam this year, we have 12 of Australia's best paediatric eye surgeons travelling to Hanoi, one each month, to train three Vietnamese eye surgeons, or paediatric eye surgeons. This is a project that we think will have triple the impact. And again, thank you to Santos, who've sponsored the training component, and also for the equipment that we donated just last month to enhance the training and the care of children in Vietnam. And in Laos next year, we're going to be doing a similar project. And in fact, the reason why we're here today is to raise money for this initiative. At this point in time, Laos doesn't have a single paediatric eye surgeon or a single paediatric eye facility. So by coming along and being part of the ballet brunch today, you're contributing to the health and the education 
and welfare of thousands of kids in this country. Another concern for us are the 12 million children around the world without glasses, simply due to a lack of optometry facilities in developing countries, something we take for granted here. So we're looking at setting up optometry training courses in Myanmar and Laos and Vietnam in the coming years. And what about that other 50% of children whose blindness is at this point in time unavoidable, whose blindness could not have been prevented or treated? Well, their blindness is due to genetic disease or inherited blindness. So we've started up a genetics program, and in fact, last year, we actually discovered a new gene for a blinding childhood condition. And it's through these discoveries that we'll hope will pave our way to the understanding of inherited blindness. So that one day, we hopefully will truly be able to achieve sight for all. And that one day, the fear felt by losing one's vision will be something experienced only in childhood games. Thank you.